Hello class! Today you are doing lab 6, Global Surface Temperature. In this lab, you are going to learn about the major controls of the temperature on Earth by building your own global surface temperature model. The global surface temperature is the average surface temperature for the entire Earth over an entire year or multiple years. The current Earth's global temperature is approximately 15 degrees Celsius or 59 degrees Fahrenheit. The major controls of Earth's surface temperature are solar radiation or how much energy we get from the Sun, albedo or Earth's reflectivity, which controls how much energy is reflected back to space, and the greenhouse effect, which controls how much Earth's heat is trapped in the atmosphere. You already learned about the role of the solar radiation in lab 1 and explored impact of greenhouse gases in lab 5. And now let's watch a NASA video called This World in Black and White that explains Earth albedo and feedback mechanisms. Picture a simple theoretical planet. Simpler. Simpler. Keep, keep going. Keep, nope, that's too far. That is, that is just a dot. Not even trying. Okay, there. This is Daisy World, a place where only two things live, black daisies and white daisies. In the early days, the atmosphere of Daisy World is cooler, and black daisies thrive in these cooler temperatures. The black daisy population does so well, in fact, that it absorbs more energy and begins to warm the little planet. But now it's too warm for black daisies, but it's just right for the white daisies to blossom and expand. And while the planet is covered with more and more white daisies, they begin to reflect more energy back into space. We call this amount of reflectance albedo. The more reflective the surface of the planet, the higher its albedo. We can think of it as a percentage of how much energy is coming in and then bouncing back out into space. For instance, the albedo of a perfect mirror would be 100%. If we had a completely black surface, the albedo would be 0%. Or a water world, that could be 20%. Now, the white daisies cool the planet again, and that makes it more favorable for black daisies to thrive once again. Now we're back to where we started. The black daisies have taken over, but they'll warm up the planet, and then they'll die, and the white daisies will grow, but then they'll reflect more heat back out, and then they'll die, and on and on and on and back and forth. And over time, within a narrowly defined temperature range, Daisy World stays resilient and makes it possible for daisies to exist at all. Of course, this is a theoretical planet. There are no variables, like rotation, seasons, diseases, geography, or even humans. It does illustrate how a change in one environmental condition can cause a change in a second condition, which in turn can change the first condition again. We call this a feedback loop. The Daisy World model is an example of a negative feedback loop because the initial changes to the climate are muted by the combination of black and white daisies. On Earth, we can see this kind of negative feedback loop with clouds. Let's say increasing temperatures cause more surface evaporation, which cause more cloud formation, and clouds, much like our white daisies, have a higher albedo than the Earth's surface. Then the clouds will reflect more heat and cool the planet. When we look at snow and ice at the poles, which have a high albedo, we can see a positive feedback loop. When temperatures rise, the snow and ice melt, and so even more energy is absorbed by the water and this continues to melt the snow and ice even further. With increasing climate change, the natural reflectance of our icy poles dramatically declines. Daisy World is a much simpler place than our own planet, but it shows us that maintaining a population on Earth requires a delicate balance with the right organisms and the right range of environmental conditions. I hope this video helped you understand how complex and fragile Earth's climate system is 
and how a change in one parameter can lead to an imbalance in the whole system. In section 4 of this lab, you are going to continue examining the major controls of the Earth's climate by building your own temperature model. Don't be confused by the formulas in this section. You don't need to calculate them. They are already incorporated into the model, which will calculate everything for you. First, you need to open this Excel spreadsheet. Then, move from page to page, one by one, answering questions in the lab. You need to fill in only the yellow blanks in each page. Everything else is the information already provided for you. If you see an error like this, it means that you missed a blank in one of the previous pages. Go back and correct it, and the model will automatically calculate all the answers you need for this section of your lab. In this lab, you will be exploring the following major questions. How does a change in the solar constant impact the absorption of shortwave radiation and the emission of longwave radiation? How does the ocean impact the Earth's energy balance? And how does the concentration of greenhouse gases, besides water vapor, impact Earth's surface temperature? Have fun learning! See you next time!